Hello Internet, so nice to see you. Who does not know Fade to Black by Metallica? The intro solo alone is iconic. And at the end of the intro solo, there is a very interesting change of key, a very interesting modulation. I was talking about this modulation with a few friends recently, and I was surprised at how they struggled to make sense of it, on how exactly the chord flow into each other and why this modulation is so smooth. So here I'm going to talk about how Metallica modulates at the end of the intro solo in Fade to Black, and by learning the principles behind it, you may be able to do this in your songs too. So let's hear the modulation first. So let's see what's happening here. Before the change of key, we are in the key of B minor. Why do I say that? Because all the chords are consistent with the key of B minor, and the solo is played in the scale of B natural minor. After the change of key, instead, we are in the key of A minor. Not only the chord progression is clearly in A minor leading into the verse, but the solo ends with the A natural minor played from root to root for two octaves. So this is a modulation down a full step from the key of B minor to the key of A minor, and yet it sounds pretty fluid and not abrupt. So let's see exactly what chord progression we are using here, what harmonic tricks we are using to make this modulation sound so smooth. <laughs> Now we could stay here for a long time discussing the exact name of those chords, but essentially the harmonic meaning of those chords is three bars of B minor and one bar of A with a bass of C. The important thing here is that we are in the key of B minor and then the last chord is an A chord. Then at the end of the solo the harmony change and we have this part. This new part begins with what we can classify as an F chord. Sure, it's an F with no third and with a sixth, but it's nevertheless an F chord. And then it proceeds with an E with a bass of G sharp, an E with a bass of B, and then keeps going on in an E7, with the high note of D, then going into the A minor chord. So at the end of the day, we move from a section in the key of B minor, containing the chord B minor and A, to a section in the key of A minor, containing the chords F, E and A minor. This F and this E chord are easy to explain, because they are the sixth chord and the fifth chord in the key of A minor, where E, of course, is taken from the A harmonic minor scale. So the modulation here, the change of key, happens between the A chord and the F chord. So this movement between the A chord to the F chord is where most people get stuck. After all, what is the reason why going from the 7th chord in the key of B minor to the 6th chord in the key of A minor should sound so smooth? Well, the solution, in fact, is pretty easy, but it's not really explained in many books of music theory. This is simply what we call a chromatic median modulation. Those are simply fancy words for the chord moves a major third or a minor third up or down, and we make sure that those two chords have at least one note in common. So let me explain what I just said, and you see how this makes perfect sense, and you'll also see how to do this in your songs. Incidentally, I do have a video on chromatic median modulations, and you can find it by clicking on the link on the top right. So here I'm moving between the A chord to the F chord. The A chord has notes A, C sharp, and E. The F chord has notes F, C, and A. Immediately we notice that those two chords have a common note, the A note. It's in both chords. The other two notes do something very interesting. 
the E note in the A chord moves up a half step to the F note in the F chord, and the C sharp note in A moves down a half step to the C note in F. So those two notes move in contrary motion, one goes up and one goes down, and they move just one half step, which is the minimum possible motion those notes can make. So even if those two chords are not in the same key, all their notes are close by and they are related in this way. So the transition sounds smooth because the notes in the chord move just a little bit. Indeed, if I'm playing A, C sharp, E on the guitar, and then I'm playing A, C, F, you can hear those two chords feel connected. Modulations that use this kind of chromatic mediant motion exist all over the place. A very famous example is in the Star Wars soundtrack in the Imperial March. Just at the very beginning of the theme, you hear a chord progression that is the same as we've just seen, only with minor chords. So A minor to F minor. Here the notes in A minor are A, C, E, and the notes in F minor are F, A flat, C. Now the common tone is the C note, and the other two notes do exactly the same as before. So one note, the E note, goes up a half step to F, and the other note, the A note, goes down a half step to A flat. So again, one note stays constant, one note goes up just a half step, and one note goes down just a half step. Those notes are all close by, and that's why your ear recognizes those two chords as related and connects them together smoothly. So, recapping the fade to black modulation, we have B minor and A, then F, E, A minor. The B minor and A are in the key of B minor. The F, E, and A minor are in the key of A minor, and between A and F, there is a chromatic mediant motion. But there is more than that. If you take the bass notes of the F and E parts, the notes are those. We have an F note, then a G-sharp note, then a B note, and then we take the high note, that is a D note, and if we collect all those notes together, we have F, G-sharp, B, and D. Those notes put together spell a G-sharp diminished seventh chord. As we have already seen in the video about doing modulation with diminished chords that you can find clicking on the link on the top right, this diminished chord, this G-sharp diminished seventh chord, leads you to the key of A minor. So you see, this F2E section here spells also a G-sharp diminished seventh chord. So whether you want to see this as a 6-5-1 in A minor, or as a diminished chord that points you to A minor, all this creates a very smooth modulation going from the B minor key to the A minor key. Of course, the question everybody is asking right now is, did Metallica do all this on purpose? Did Metallica actually knew all this theory and applied it deliberately? The answer is, I don't know. They for sure know way more theory than they let out. And honestly, Cliff Barton was very competent at music theory too. But maybe, maybe they did all this by ear, or maybe they were thinking about the sixth and the fifth chord, but they didn't really think about the diminished chord at the bass. Again, I think Cliff Barton knew his theory pretty well, so maybe it was done deliberately, but then again, maybe it was done completely by ear. Regardless, what I just explained is why it works, and it's also how we can replicate all this in our music. Of course, to be able to connect chord progressions in different keys, you first need to be able to write those chord progressions in different keys, and then you need to be able to do what we were doing before, voice lead the chords into each other and see how the notes inside every chord connect to other chord. If you want to know more about this, I do recommend you guys check out my course, Complete Chord Mastery. Complete Chord Mastery is not a book. 
It's a complete video course made by guitar players for guitar players. We do all our theory straight on the fretboard. We are never gonna see a piano example in complete chord mastery. Everything is done on the guitar and everything is immediately practical and applicable for guitar players. If you have just a minute, click on the link on the top right and check out complete chord mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button and don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any observation, feedback, comment, well write it down in the comment, I love reading from you. This is Tommaso Zilia of MusicDuryForGuitar.com and until next time, enjoy!